Hi, and welcome back to our QGIS lessons. I'm Tim Aubrey from DMAD Marine Mammal Research Association, and today we're going to be looking at how we can begin to use the buffer tool that we talked about a few lessons back to look at some habitat modeling. Um, please do remember to keep liking, subscribing, and sharing these videos. As of today, we've had 8,000 views, which is fantastic um, across the videos. So please keep sharing them and let's, let's help as many people as we can learn during this difficult period. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, in this lesson we're going to be looking at some very, very, very basic habitat modelling. So in my example, I'm looking at uh, an animal in Montenegro whose habitat is thought to be within one kilometre of a water source. And so I've loaded up the water sources in Montenegro. Um, I've got both the water lines and the water areas. Um, and I want to put a buffer around this data, just like we did for our track lines in the previous lesson, uh, to look at the potential areas that my species might be present in. Um, you'll notice that I've also got the the UTM versions, so the projected versions here, and I'll show you why. So if I go up to Vector and go to Geoprocessing Tools and Buffer like we did last time, and I'm just interested in my raw water areas level, so this is the one which is in WGS84, um, you'll notice that the only distances that I can select are degrees, and the suggested distance is 10 degrees, which is um, a bit ridiculous really because well we know from our lessons that there's only 90 degrees between the equator and the poles so I'm going to close that and then show you what happens once I use the projected version if you've forgotten how to do the projected version you just right click on your um, your areas tab and then go down to export save features as and when we're exporting it we're just gonna use the UTM version Okay, so now I'm going to come up to my water areas, go do the same, go to buffer, and then now I've got the option for distance. I'm obviously going to select kilometers, and I'm just going to change it to one kilometer and run my buffers. Okay, and then I'm just going to drop that below my water area and we can see the buffers around the water area. Similarly, we're going to do the same with our water lines. So if I go up to Geoprocessing Tools, um, and again, this is, okay, so I've clearly not saved my water lines correctly. So I'll just go back to water line and go to save as feature see feature as um, and I'm just going to call it waterline 2 UTM 34 and then just make sure we've got our UTM zone selected and click OK okay and you see we've got it here so this time I'm going to go up to vector again J pressing tools buffer and hopefully it'll work yeah so you see this time kilometers is an option and we can change it to one and click run and our colors are a little jazzy but you can see that we've um, yeah we've got these nice areas um, which are our potential habitats for for our fictitious animal uh, around our water sources really really easily just one final thing um, when we were saving these layers, we saved them as scratch layers, which means they're just temporary layers. Um, and what we can do is we can save these scratch layers by just clicking this icon here and going to file name and just calling it. Um, so this was the purple buffer, so this is the area buffer. So I'm just going to call it area buffer. and press OK. And I'm going to do the same for our 
other buffered layer. I'm just going to come through and I'm going to call it, go into the folder and just call it a line buffer. And what can be quite useful is to, what I should have done for the arrow really is just write the, the extent of the buffer, say one kilometer. Okay, excellent. And that's it for this lesson. I'll see you on the next one.